Matt here of LFT Research. Welcome back. This is Mach 4.4. Actually, it's Mach, the Quest for Mach 4, Part 4. We were using this Savage Axis and 30-06 here. And right now we're just trying to find out, all right, what's the absolute highest velocity we can get with this? Now, we've been trying to get higher and higher. The max we've ever been able to achieve is 4,559 feet per second. That's not what we're doing today. Today, we were doing a ladder test. So, we had a bunch of these loaded up, 55 grain, full metal jacket, and a Sabo and a 30 out 6 case. We stacked the powder charges from low to high, and then we used standard primers and, rag and magnum primers to see what kind of a differential we could get. And all honesty, the differential is statistical noise. But, we're just gearing up for the next in the series, where we're going to take a bunch of exotic bullets using the highest safe charge we were able to find today, crank stuff even faster. But enough talking about what the next video is, let's take a look at what happened. All right, and here's the first shot, and we got a little bit of flame, and you'll notice right about here, it appears the gas wave is what triggered the chronos, at least the optical chronograph, to give us a speed. That's our best guess as to what's triggering it. Now, if you're wondering on accuracy, all the way until the absolute fastest rounds, this was extremely accurate. I was choosing exactly where I was placing these bullets. Now, if you're wondering where the flame is coming from, our best guess is that's actually coming because we're hitting the platter. Now, to give you an idea of how hard drive platters work, they're actually a piece of metal that is magnetic over top of aluminum. Granted, now they're moving more towards ceramic, but these are older drives, and you can kind of tell by the capacity. <laughs> but as you can see here, there's a decent amount of penetration. We're normally penetrating about two hard drives unless you hit the spindle, then you only get one and you're pushing into the second, but you blow out the motor. Here, we didn't manage to capture anything with the Kronos camera, but still, it's interesting to see what happens. Now, you'll notice right there that we actually see the flash from the muzzle blast reflecting off the hard drive. So you get an exact time period minus the light delay for actual travel time differential between the speed of light and the speed of these bullets. These bullets are going really, really fast, as you can see, over 4,000 feet per second. Right here, you'll see a resolution drop. That's because we were pushing frame rates up to 12,596 frames per second to really get an idea of what it looks like once we get that platter ignition going on these hard drives. Really an amazing flash there. All right, we're taking a look at the same shot here twice. This is recorded at 240 frames per second. That's all you see. Here's the same thing at 12,000 plus frames per second. That's the same flash, and you can see so much more detail here, including things like the Sabo hitting the table, bouncing off, hitting the hard drive, and then flying off. That's really awesome to be able to see stuff like that happening. You'll never make that out with, a, with your normal eye. I mean, even me shooting it, it took three or four of these shots before I started noticing the ignition, which is kind of crazy, but then again, I was looking through the insane muzzle flash you already saw that we're getting out of this gun. Look at the back of the block. I don't see or feel an exit wound. Let's flip it over. Now you'll notice right here, that's caved in and broke. And that wound cavity, we shattered the bullet entirely. Looks like it ended about there. Yeah. 
That's a pretty massive wound. Though, I want to say we did more with base 556, five, but I don't think I don't think we really did anything more driving it that fast than we did at normal 556 five, velocity. No, we didn't. I think we actually ended up doing less. The final penetration well, of the base. If you look here, this entry hole is definitely blown a little weirder. Now, as you'll notice, this wound cavity starts absolutely immediately. Not, I'm going to come in a little bit and then boom. It was an instant start of the wound cavity and then it shredded. I mean, you have the core of the bullet in there. It didn't even penetrate 16 inches, maybe about 10. So I think we're actually getting less even at this much higher speed. Mm hmm. Which you is really actually interesting. All that energy in it dropped it between one inch and eight inches. Like a hyper varmint round. Yeah. It really, that's all we did is we created a hyper varmint round. Yeah, we made a 55 grain act like a 40 grain varmint. 35 grain. Or, yeah. 35 or 40 grain varmint, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to load this up with a ceramic BB and see what it does next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>